All right, so in this video, I'm going to explain how I've set up a basic rhythm game uh, utilizing sound cues with MetaSound in Unreal Engine 5.3.2. So just to give you an idea, um, I have a basic blueprint set up that has a spline, and it's spawning a note based off of cues in MetaSound. And I have it timed up to a trigger, so when it passes the hit box, I can time the hit to the note, and then it's destroyed in this box at the end. So I'll hit play so you can see. So the music started, and I'm tapping to the beat, and I'm just using a print string to tell me if I've missed. So if I miss, it'll hit miss. If I go beyond, it'll miss. And I can tap these out in Adobe Audition which I'll also show. So that's just a quick example. I'm going to get into this and start this from scratch so you can see how to set up this whole blueprint and I'll explain how to tap out the cues or markers in Adobe Audition as well. Okay so I'm in Unreal Engine. I have a new empty game project set up here. Uh, this is not truly empty yet so I'm going to create a new level and start from scratch. I want everything to be empty. So I'll make a new level. I'll call it Rhythm Level. It doesn't matter what you name it. So this will be what we use. So I'm going to double click this to open it. Save Selected. So it's completely blank. So I'm going to go to Edit Project Settings and make sure that this is using my new level. So rhythm level, rhythm level, that's all set up. I'm not going to touch the game mode right now. And then I'll close this. I'm going to save it. So I've already set up my project folder. So I'm going to start this off by creating a new blueprint. And I'll start organizing my layers as I go. So I'm going to right click and create a new Blueprint class. This will be an actor, and I'll call it BP underscore uh, spline is fine. So I'm going to double click this, and this should open up the blueprint. So I'm going to add some components here, and I'm going to start with a spline component. So I'm going to click add, type, and search spline. So spline utility. And I'm going to rename this lane 1. I'm only going to create one lane for the sake of the tutorial. Uh, you could have multiple lanes in here, but I'm just going to do the one. And I just want to make sure that this is facing the right direction. And make sure that I have it set up so that it's long enough as well. So um, I'm going to drag this out. So I'm going to make my location of this second spline knot here 400. And this will be the length of my spline in total. So the length of the lane. So I'm going to add a couple of collision boxes here. So this first one I'm going to add. Just type in box, box collision. Um, I'm going to grab this one here and I'll name this spawner. So this is going to be the one that I spawn the notes from. And I'll add an arrow to that as well. So I want to see which way is facing forward. So I'm actually going to be constructing this kind of backwards. So I'm going to be going from the back here. Um, I'm setting this back here at the beginning because I want the notes to spawn from the beginning and they're going to go forward along the forward direction from this box. So that's going to be my spawner. I'm going to add another one another box and this will be you can just call it destroyer call it whatever you want I'll name it destroyer and it's gonna be the box that I use to destroy stuff so I'm gonna move this up to the default scene root make sure it's not nested in the original spawner and then I'll just move this over here so this is basically the kill zone for the notes as they float into this area they're gonna be destroyed 
So I'm just scaling it so it looks different, but if you had multiple lanes, you'd scale this up, and then that way, as the notes pass through here, they're killed when they hit this zone here. So I'll just make sure it lines up at the end. Obviously there's other ways you could do this, but this is what I'm doing for this. So I have these things set up. I also need some targets, so I'm going to create a cylinder. So I'll click Add, and I'm going to find a cylinder. Oops, try that again. And this will be, I'll just, actually I'll leave this as a cylinder. And I'm going to click on this and make sure it's also in the default seam route. So this thing, I'm just going to pull this over for now. I'll make it about 300. Um, yeah, 300 is perfect for this. And then I'm going to scale it down. So I'll make it smaller. And scale it flatter. I'm going to switch my snaps here. Sorry, that was angle snaps. And then I'm going to rotate it as well. So this is just a visual cue. So as the note passes by, this is kind of my target. So I'm going to make sure that this is set back a bit behind my lane. And you can make this as big as you want. I'm just going to scale it out a little bit more. Something like that for now. And I'll end up cloning this and putting another one in front of it. I'll set up materials for this after. I just want to make sure that these are set up here for now. So on in the cylinder, I'll make another one. If I could spell cylinder. Okay, so this one I'm going to name bullseye. And this is just another visual cue that I'm going to use. So I'll move this over. So I'm going to move this across to 300 again. And rotate it again. And scale it down. So this is kind of my actual hit zone that I'm going to set up and I'll end up having a collision sphere over this where we're going to actually register the hit as the note goes by. So again these are just visuals that I'm putting in here for now. <coughs> And I'm going to end up putting materials on those afterwards as well. So that's our target area set up. Uh, so the next thing I would have to add to this would be the collision detection inside of there. So I'll add this while I'm here. We'll put a sphere collision. And again, this could be nested inside the bullseye even. It doesn't matter. And this should be, if you nest it in there, it should line up right in the middle. And I'm going to pull this out and scale it up a bit. So the smaller you make this, though, the um, the tougher it's going to be to hit the note on time. So this could be determining the accuracy. So I'm just going to scale it up so it's registering the hits. And I'll put this right on top of the lane or the, the spline. Alright, so as the notes are spawned, they're going to come up here. I'm going to set up the note with a timeline eventually. They're going to come up and they're going to pass through here, and this is going to be what registers the hit. And we're going to use a tick event for this in the event graph, to uh, just to check on tick if there's an array of elements, if there's anything in here or not. This way the uh, key press is going to be accurate. So I'll, exp I'll explain that once we get into the graph. I just want to set up all the components before we get in there. <clears throat> so I'll throw together a couple of materials real quick. So I'll just right click and make a material. 
call it M underscore uh, glow material, or I'll just call it target. Then I'll double click this and quickly set this up. <coughs> so I'll put a constant 3 vector in here and we'll double click this and I can change the glow amount or the glow color here. So actually I'm going to click on the material itself and switch this to unlit. So from default lit to unlit and then I'm just utilizing the emissive color here. Okay, So I'll right click it like that. Actually I'm going to right click and convert this to a parameter and I'll just call this uh, glow color. Okay, so it doesn't matter what color it is here, I'm going to end up making a material instance. So I'm going to hit save and I'll close that one down. And then I'm going to go here, I'll right click on that material and create a material instance. So it's mi underscore targets. And then I can just make as many of these as I need to. So, um, sorry, I'm going to rename that. That should be named mi targets green and then I'll make another one mi targets red and that's all I need for now so I'll go into the red one and turn on the glow color and change it so we'll make this one red So something like that's fine. I'll click save and then I can throw these onto the targets here. So I'm going to take the cylinder and I'll drag this red one on there. And then I'll take my bullseye and I'll drag this green one onto there. And then we have our colors set up for this. All right, so I'm going to hit compile and save. Make sure everything's saved. And we could drag this out into our scene at this point, so that just to have a visual. Um, and then we could set up our player controller and the camera and all that stuff as well. So if I was to do that, I would just... I'll actually close this for a minute. I'll go here, and I'm going to drag the spline into the viewport. So I'm going to set it to 0, 0, 0. So I'm at the 0 in the world. And I'll just focus in on this. So this is what we're looking at here so far. So I'm going to save everything and then we'll continue on. Okay, so I'm going to put a player start out here. So I'm going to find player start, drag one of these out here, and I'll just set the location to 0, 0, 0 for now. Um, so I'm going to move this towards the middle here. And so I'm going to set that to 200 because I made the spline 400. And I'm going to pull this back about negative 210. And yeah, I'm going to leave that in the middle for now. So yeah, right now if I hit play, um, I need to set up a player a pawn for this as well with a camera. So I'm going to save this and I'll set that up next. Actually I don't need that at all right now. I'm just going to rotate this uh, 90 degrees so it's facing. So I'm going to hit play. I'm not going to set up a player controller right now. I'm going to keep this simple for the time being. So what I'll actually do right now is set up the first um, target or the note, the note that we're going to spawn. So in content, I'm going to right click and create a new blueprint actor, call it BP Note 1. And I'm going to double click to open this up. And inside of here, I'm going to add a sphere. So a sphere basic shape. And I'm going to scale this down quite a bit. So I'll just, it can just re remain uh, as a sphere. I'm not going to rename this right now. So I am going to change the scale down to 0.2 like this. 
and I'll just use the green <coughs> material for now and that's fine so I'm gonna hit compile and save so we're gonna add some nodes to the graph here so we're gonna need event begin play so I'll get rid of that little pin there uh, we are not gonna need those and we're gonna start by off event begin play we're gonna get active class and we're gonna be looking for our spline or our lane so actor of class we're gonna look for BP spline right here because we want to we want to find this and then we want to send our note down the spline using a timeline in here so I'm gonna take this and promote this to a variable And actually, sorry, we don't want get all actors of class. We just want get actor of class. <clears throat> so this top one right here. So I'm going to take that and delete that. And do that again. BP spline. And <clears throat> promote this to a variable. So this I will name something different. So this is going to be called rhythm spline. This way I know what I'm pulling out here. Okay, so we have that set up. Um, I'm going to need to create a custom event here, so I'll just type in custom event and I'm gonna name this um, move notes. All right, so we've got move notes here, and we need to create a timeline that we're going to use for the object to move along. So I'm going to right click and search for timeline. I'm going to add a timeline here, and yeah, you can name it if you want. I'm just going to keep it as timeline for now. So I'll double click this to open it up, and we're going to add a track. We'll add a float track. And then from here, I'm going to make sure that, so this is set to, we'll set this to one. And I'm going to create two keys here. So I'm going to create a key here, which is set to zero, zero. And then I'll just create another key here, which is set to zero, one. And then I'll zoom this out. Oops, sorry, zero. Or, uh, sorry, one, one, not zero, one. One, one. Okay, so we're going from zero to one. And I'm going to compile and save that, and then jump back over to the event graph. So that's all we need to do with the timeline for now. Um, we're going to set the play rate as this note gets spawned. We can control how fast it moves along the spline. So what I'll do here is I'm going to grab out the timeline from here. So I'm going to get timeline. And then off of this we can do a set play rate. And I'll connect up the exact pin across here. This is going to go into play from start. I want to make sure it always plays from the beginning of the spline. And off of this, I'll start organizing these nodes a bit better as I go. So for new play rate, we're going to have to create a variable for this. So I'm going to create a new variable, and it's going to be a float but I'm going to call this time to complete and yeah we'll change this to a float so we can get time to complete and we're going to divide this so I'm going to do divide and I'm going to change this so I'm going to divide by one and we're going to plug that into new rate 
So I'm going to hit compile and we're going to go back to time to complete. And we'll be able to change this um, whenever we want. So we can control the speed of this note coming down the lane. So I'm going to set that to 5 for now. And hit compile and save. And just remember that we set this up in here. So from here we're going to have to do a few things. So we're going to have to get our rhythm spline. So I'm going to pull this out here as a get. And we're going to tuck this up under here. And we need to get the, the spline length from here. And then we're going to have to um, combine this and alert this with the rhythm spline to get the location and the distance along the spline as it's moving. So I'm going to pull this up here again as a get. And we're going to get spline length. Okay, so this is going to convert this for us because we named it lane one in the blueprint. And we're going to take this new track and we're going to alert. So I'll pull this out here so it's easier to see. And I'm actually going to pull that into the alpha down here and hold alt and disconnect this. So we're going to alert into B and we're going to take this out into two different things here so we're going to look for actually we're going to use this rhythm spline up here and we're going to get location uh, get location at distance along spline okay so that's one And we're going to drag off of this again. And we're going to get rotation at distance along spline as well. Okay, so get location and get rotation at distance along spline. And then we're lurping from here. So we're going to go into distance here. We're going to go into distance here. And I'm going to try to organize this a bit better. So I can come back and fix this up later. Um, yeah, so that should take care of most of this. We need to update this as well. So we're going to drag out from update off of the timeline. And we're going to set actor transform right here. And then we're going to plug in from... The return value here. <clears throat> um, actually, we need to split this. Hang on. Let's right click and split the struct pin so that this breaks us up. So we've got transform, location, rotation, and scale. So we're going to take the distance along spline location, plug that into location, and rotation into rotation. So we're not touching the scale here, but I do know that I scaled the sphere to point 0.2 so we're gonna make sure it stays at the proper scale right there so yeah that's all we have to do there um, let's see everything's connected here now so I could just reroute this just double click put a reroute node up here and this should work so we'll test this out in a second we'll try and get this to spawn and we'll call this in on the spline blueprint and we'll test this out. So I'm going to hit compile. There's no errors in here. I'm going to hit save and then we'll try and run this along the spline. Okay, so I need to open up the spline blueprint here. So I'm going to double click that up. And now in event graph, I'm going to need the event tick later. So I'll leave that in here event begin overlap I can get rid of and off event begin play we'll just use this for now to test this out 
So I'm going to attempt to spawn the notes. So what I'm going to do right now is off of Event Begin Play, I'm going to go ahead and spawn Actor of Class. So spawn actor from class. So the class is going to be our note, which was BP underscore note one. Okay, so we have that set up. So what I need to do is grab uh, this thing here, our spawner. So we've got our spawner set up in here. So we're going to get spawner. And from here, we want to get the relative location. So get relative oops, uh, location at the bottom here. And we're going to plug that. We need to split the struct pin here and plug this into spawn transform location. So it should spawn here and then it should spit this out from the front here where the arrow is facing. Okay, so with that set up, uh, let's see, what else is in here? No, that should be all good. So off of here now, we can get that custom event. So we should be able to find move notes. And we can put that in there like that. And I'm going to hit compile and save. So technically, when we play the game, it should spawn a note here. So let's just see what happens. Let's see if this works. There it is. There it goes. Too small. Or I'm too far away. All right. So we can mess with the scale, or I can move the camera. Uh, let's check that out again. Yeah, it's pretty small. All right. Let's make that sphere a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go to here, sphere. Let's make this 0.5. I can mess with this after. Um, so, yeah, we'll change this too. We could probably just grab this from here. And we can get the uh, get relative. Whoops, get relative scale 3D. Should be able to plug that in here, and it should remain the same. So whatever we end up changing this to, that way we don't have to keep updating it there. So I'm gonna save that out, and we'll see. Make sure that worked. All right, there, there it goes. Okay. Let's try that again. Let's go. Let's go back here and put this back to point two. Hit compile. Check this out. Yeah, way smaller. Okay, we need to find the balance here. I'm gonna go with point three. Seems to be pretty massive difference here. Okay, that's okay. Uh, whew, we'll probably go with 0.35 and leave it at that for now. And that's good enough. Let's see what that looks like. All right, that's better. Okay, so I feel like I'm probably going to have to move the camera in or adjust this player start. Um, but I'll come back to that later. I just want to get this all working and then we'll mess with the camera at the end. All right, so we know that this works. So now we can actually dig into our spline here and start creating some serious action. So what we want to do is we actually want to be spawning these notes based off of a meta sound and the cues from the meta sound. So this next section, I want to get that working at this point, and then we can worry about uh, hitting a key and timing it to the note. So the next section, I'm going to be using Adobe Audition. If you have another program like Logic or Reaper or something else, it, you should be able to do the same thing, but I'll be demonstrating with Adobe Audition. So I'm going to set that up, and I'm going to bring in some audio that I can work with from there. 
Okay, so I'm here in Adobe Audition, and I'm just going to do a quick overview of how to add markers to a track in here. Um, I might link in the description later on another video that does a deep dive on how to customize markers and all that stuff. Uh, but I just want to do this quickly. So I'm going to open up some free audio that I found, and I might link to this as well. So I've got this one right here. And so you can see the wave in here. And... I can zoom in, so if I go down here, I can zoom the track in like this. Um, I have markers over here on the left. If you don't see that, you can go to Window, Markers, and make sure that that's there. So right off the bat, I'm going to start with one at the beginning. If I right-click, I can go down to Marker, Add Q Marker. But you can see the shortcut for that is M. So I'm actually going to tap these in uh, manually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit play because you can actually add markers by hitting M if you hit play. And I'm just going to tap a few in. I'll only go so far. I'm, just, I'm going to make it short and I'm just going to use this in Unreal After. So I'm going to hit play and I'm going to start tapping M and you'll see the markers or cues getting dropped in here. All right, that's as far as I'm going to go with that. Um, you can see I missed at the beginning here. There's a sloppy one at the beginning. So if you want to move these markers around, you can. So I could go back here. I could hit play, and I could watch these. So I added this one in here that I absolutely don't need. So I could take this one, marker 2, and I could delete this out of here. And you can see they're just named in order. Um, I could change the name, but I'm just going to leave it like this. Adobe Ad or Unreal Engine will read these in order. So if I hit play here. All right, so these sync up to the beginning of the beat. So if I wanted to go through and tighten these all up, I could shift these over and try to line them up right with the beat on the wave. And I could try to get these a little more accurate just by shifting things over and fixing them like that. I'm going to leave it like this, and I'm just going to export it the way it is for now. So when I save this out, so I can select all, and if I zoom out, you'll see that it's selected the whole thing. So I've got markers just up to this point right now. I could have done the entire song. I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to save selection as. So it's saving it as a wave. So this is going to save it with the metadata and everything. So you want to make sure include markers and other metadata is also checked. And this is what MetaSounds is going to access to create the cues. It's going to use these markers to um, find the cue for our rhythm game. So I'm going to make sure I know where I'm saving this. So I'm just going to save it here. I'm just going to call this Astro Race Tutorial so that I can find this. Tutorial Cues. All right, good enough. I'm going to hit save. It's going to save out this wave. And I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to jump back to Unreal Engine. And I'm going to import that sound. All right, so I'm going to go here. I'm going to make a new folder. It's starting to get messy here, so I'm going to call this audio. And double click, and inside of audio, I'm just going to import that wave that I saved out. So somewhere in here, I've got audio, and I've got the one that I just saved out. Astral Race Tutorial Cues. Click Open, and it will import this. And if I hit play, there it is. So now I'm going to right click and we're going to create a meta sound. So I'm going to go to audio. We're going to create a meta sound source. I'll just call this um, MSS meta sound source underscore astro race. 
And then I'm going to double click this to open this up. And now we're inside of our MetaSound source. So off of our input here, I'm going to click and drag off this pin. And I'm going to just type in wave. And we're going to look down here. So we need to create a wave player. I'm going to do 2.0 surround. Or stereo, sorry, stereo. All right, so it creates a wave player, a stereo wave player. And we need to grab our audio here. So I've got the Astro Race tutorial cues. So we're going to be able to output cues from here. And I'll just show you an example here. So right now nothing's happening. But we're going to save this. And I'm going to take these outputs down here. I'm going to duplicate this. Actually, no, I need to convert this to stereo. So I'm going to delete this one. Or just get it out of the way for now. We're going to, we're going to take this out left and we're going to promote to graph outputs. And then we're going to take out right and do the same thing. And then we'll have these here. So we have our left and right output. Um, this we're just going to not use. So this output here, so unfinished, we're just going to go right into output over here. And then we want to go from our queue here. So on queue point, um, if we go off of this, we can actually do promote to output as well. So this will be output. This is what we're going to be listening to in the blueprint. We're going to be accessing this right here. So I want to make sure I name this. So output here, I'm going to call this Astro Q so that I know what this is. And this is going to be a trigger, so that's fine. If I save this, everything here should be good. Um, actually, yeah, we're going to come back to this later. I have to explain something else later. So if I hit play, you can't hear anything right now but you can see that it's picking up the beat. So it's flashing here because it's actually picking up the cue. So to actually get this to play sound, um, I've actually got this connected wrong. I'm going to delete those. So I'm clicking on the wave player, but I'm going to actually be going up to MetaSound here and changing the output format from mono to stereo. All right, so now I have output left and output right these can get plugged in here properly and this will be all connected up properly so now I'm gonna have stereo out left and right so actually if I hit play now you can hear it you can see the beats coming in here so those are the markers that I set in audition so now the question is how do we access this and how do we use this in blueprint so that's what I'm going to show next. We will have to come back to this later to look at source as well. Um, I'll come back to this and explain it when this becomes an issue. Because um, I want it to happen and then I'll explain it. So for now, we've got this set up. I'm going to hit save. We don't have to do anything else. We have a cue point, which we named Astro Q. We have our output. Everything's fine here. So now we're going to go back to the spline blueprint. And we're going to change this so that it's actually spawning our notes based off of that cue. Okay, so I'm going to hold Alt and disconnect and then begin playing. I'm going to pull this over here for a minute. We'll, we'll work our way back to spawning the notes. So I'm going to open up my audio section here and I'm going to drag out the MetaSound source that we created for Astro race here and I'm gonna plug this into here. So off event begin play we're gonna create that meta sound. So if we were to test that out right now if I hit compile and if I hit play the audio is playing from the meta sound. So from here what we need to do is figure out how we can access this from there. So I'm just gonna pull over um, something here that's from the epic uh the unreal engine public roadmap so there's something here meta sound output watching this is experimental 
So we can access this right now. This is MetaSound is something Epic is constantly updating and working on. So we can actually use this MetaSound output subsystem to watch the output from our MetaSound and then we can do something based off of that sound cue from here. So I'm going to be setting this up in here. So what I'm looking for, I'm going to right click and find the meta sound output subsystem right here. Okay, so this is what I'm going to be using to watch the output from our meta sound. So I'm going to click and drag from here and you can find watch output. And we're going to connect this across here. And I'm going to take this stuff and just move it over. And I'm going to hit Q to line this up a little bit better here. Just push stuff over. So, okay, so from here, we need to find the output name. So this is going to be, if we go back to here, we named this Astro Q. Okay, this is the output name here. I'm going to copy this just to make sure it's spelled exactly the same. This is what we're watching or looking for. We're looking for the output from AstroQ. All right, so from this, uh, we can set the rest of this up. So from the on output value changed, I'm going to click and drag from here and create a custom event off of here. And we're going to name this Q change. So we're just checking, we're watching for any change in the output name from AstroQ here. Alright, so from this uh, we could do whatever we want based off of that Q uh, change. So what I'm actually going to do is spawn our notes. So I'm going to pull this over here. I'll reorganize this in a minute. I just want to make sure that this is actually going to work. So I'm going to hit compile and I'm going to hit save. And we're going to go in here and we're going to hit play and we're going to see what happens. Nothing. And the reason nothing's happening is because we have to go back and we did not connect this. So return value needs to go into audio component. It has no idea what it's looking at right now. So we'll compile again. We'll hit save. And let's try that again. There they go. Right on cue. Nice. I didn't set up my kill zone, so they're not dying over here either. They're just colliding. All right, so that is working. Let's fix that kill zone real quick. I'm going to go back over to viewport, and I'm going to grab this. So this should be set to overlap in the collision section. So under collisions, we're going to have this overlap all dynamic. That should be fine. And then from that, we are going to do an overlap. So down at the bottom here, we'll just go to on component begin overlap and we'll add that in. So all we want to do with this is destroy anything that overlaps with this. So I'm going to go out from here destroy actor and this is going to be whatever actor overlaps so I'm going to hit compile and I'm going to check this out and make sure it's not destroying anything it's not supposed to okay so these hit there and they disappear now all right so we're getting somewhere so what I'd like to do next is set up a, an input. So I'm just going to wire to the F key for now. So when I hit F, it's going to um, check to see if our timing is good. So as the note goes over the bullseye, when we hit F, it's either going to be success or a miss. And just to get this started, I also want the bullseye um, to change colors. So I'm going to create another material instance to get that started. So back here in content, I'll go to one of my material instances here. I'm going to right click, create another material instance, mi underscore blue. Just make it blue for now. I'll just change it later. And I'm going to change my glow color, make it a blue color. So I'll click OK and save that. And then I can close this and get out of there. Um, 
yeah, we'll come back to some of this stuff after. So back in the spline blueprint in the viewport, um, I just want to make sure I remember what this is called. So this is bullseye. So in the event graph, we're going to set up a input for the F key. So I'm going to right click and I'm just going to put F keyboard and you should be able to find F right here. And we're going to do um, a pressed event here. So just to make sure everything's working and just to make sure that this is even registering when we press F, we're going to start out by changing the color of the material on our bullseye. So I'm going to pull this out here. We're going to get this and I'm going to pull off of here and we'll just do a set material. Okay, so you can see it in here, set material and on pressed we'll change the material and we'll just change it to that blue. So am I blue? Let's make sure that's what I called it, yep. So I'm going to hit compile and save and this probably won't work right now because we don't have an input set up. But what I'll also do is I'm going to add a delay here. So I'll put a delay for 0.1 seconds. And after that time, it's going to go back to its regular material. So I'm going to duplicate this with Control D. Make sure this is plugged in here. Put a reroute node. Plug this all together. Just take all these and hit Q so they line up and put this back to the original color which was it green what color was it it was green so this is going to be mi target green all right so i'm going to hit compile and save and i'm going to test this out and I'm pretty sure it's not going to work, so let's hit F. Nothing happens. So this is where we have to set up... Um, we should set up a player controller so I can't move the camera around either. So I'm going to go down here and right-click and create a new blueprint class based off of the pawn. So this will be BP underscore player all right so i'm going to jump in here and quickly add a camera so i'm going to click add and i'll find the basic camera and i'm going to take this and override the default scene route so this camera i'm actually going to change this as well i, I want this to be set to orthographic so i want the view to be flat and i'll change the ortho width to the 300 and from there we shouldn't be able to move the camera around at this point and if so I'll come back in and lock some things up so yeah so that should be fine I'm gonna hit compile and save and we're gonna jump back out of here And we're going to right click and we're going to create a, another blueprint. We're going to create a new game mode. So let's we'll make a custom game mode. I'll call it rhythm game mode. And we're going to use this. So I'm going to double click on this and just open this up for a second. So just going through things over here on the right, we've got player controller, player state, HUD, all this. Default pawn, we're going to change that to BP player. That way we can have full control over this from now on and everything else here should be fine so if we're using this we're gonna have to hit compile save and we're gonna have to go up here and tell it to use that from now on so under edit project settings we'll go to maps and modes and we're gonna change our game mode to rhythm game mode all right so that should be good so I'm gonna hit play to see what happens so now this is flat and I can't move around 
and this is lined up perfectly now. All right, so I can hit escape. We've got all that sorted out. Um, now we can also make sure that we can have input. So if I go back to BP Spline, um, just up here off of Event Begin Play, uh, we can add some stuff into there. <coughs> so I'll disconnect this for a minute. I'm going to drag off of here again and do Enable Input. And then we'll just check to make sure it's player one. So off player controller, we'll get player controller. And this will be set to zero for player one. And then we can tie this into here. All right, so if I hit compile, save again, we'll just test this because now hitting F should be changing the color. Okay, so when I hit F, it's changing the color of our bullseye. All right, so now we have to set up the timing and we need to detect this using our collision sphere in there. So to do this, let me blow this window up. We're gonna need to add a variable here. So I'm gonna hit plus and it's gonna be a Boolean and we'll name it something like note overlap. question that's fine and then we'll get this so I'm gonna drag this out as a get and we'll be checking this up here so we're gonna be checking to see if this is overlapped and then we'll fire from here so I'm gonna pull this back a bit and I'm gonna drag off of pressed and we'll do a branch and we'll have a condition here so basically we're going to be checking to see if the note has overlapped the bullseye and if it has then it's true and it's going to go through and change the color it's also going to tell us that we've hit it if not then we're going to print string and we're just going to say missed Okay, so right now we have no idea what we're even trying to overlap, so we need to set that up as well. So this is where we're going to use the event tick. So this is messy right now. I'm going to, I'm going to clean this up later. Um, I'm just going to pull this down here. And I'm going to take this from event tick. We're going to do a branch. And from here, we need to see if we're overlapping the sphere, the uh, the bullseye. So in here we have we named it sphere. We didn't change it, so that's going to be what we're looking for. So I'm going to grab this out of here, and then I'm going to click and drag, and we're going to get overlapping actors. Okay, so from here we want to tell it which class we're looking for. So I'm going to go through here and find BP note one. So it's going to get anything from the BP note class, the BP note one class. And from, we're going to check the length of the array. So we'll do length. And if it's zero, so if it's empty, so we're going to drag off of here, we'll do equals. So if it's equal to zero, then this will happen so I'm gonna go up here like that okay so this is gonna be constantly checking to see if anything is overlapping our bullseye sphere so I'll continue from here let's just pull this over start organizing things okay so from true and false we're gonna be setting note overlapped so I'm gonna set this twice so I'm gonna duplicate it so if it's true note overlapped is overlapped if it's false we're gonna set this here <clears throat> all right so it's gonna go through here and it's gonna check if the array is empty if it's false, then it's overlapping. If the array is empty, if it equals zero, then it's gonna be unchecked. 
Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to hit compile and save. And it's all wired in, so let's try it out here. So if I hit play, if I hit F, I missed. So if I get over top of there, see it's not changing color unless I'm on top of it. And it's right on time with the music almost. Um, so what we'll do too is we'll also print some different things here. So you can do whatever you want with this at this point, but I will fire off a couple of messages saying that we've hit this. So to start trying to keep this graph more organized, I'm going to use a function this time. So we're going to go down to functions and I'm going to add a function and I'll just name this good hit. You can name it whatever you want, but good hit and we'll start from here. So we're going to do off of here. We're going to do switch on integer and we can add some pins to this. So I'm going to add uh, as you can make as many as you want, but what we're doing here is we're going to have different print strings off of here. So we're going to do from selection here, we'll do a random integer in range. Right here. And we got 1, 2, 3, 4, so we're going to go from 0 to 3. Because it all integers start with 0. And then from here we can just make different print strings. So I'll set one up. And I'll just duplicate it a few times and then I'll plug them all in. And they can say, you can put whatever you want in here. Okay, so it's just to make it random, you can say different things. Okay, so this one will be nice. Great. Excellent. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. And that will do you good. So, obviously, you could have these tied into how accurate the player is pressing the key. So we could have more than one sphere in there as well. So we could be detecting um, how close the player is to the center of the bullseye. And then we could be firing off different things here. But for now, that's I'm going to hit compile and save. And go back to the graph. And I'm going to pull this out here. So what we're going to do is we're going to run that off of the end here. So actually, sorry, I'm going to not do it like this. We're going to change this. So we're going to bring this over here and I'm going to run a sequence from here. So off of the branch, we're going to do a sequence. So if this happens right away. And this is completely separate, so I'm going to pull this stuff back, make some space. So we're going to do the material change, and then we're going to do good hit. Just jam it in there like that. Okay, so keep all this organized. So I'm definitely going to reorganize all this after. Let's move this one down here. So you should start commenting. I'm making this really messy. So I'm going to hit C and comment. So this will just be destroy note. Change the color. Make it look dangerous. Uh, so this was to check if we're overlapping. So we're going to check to see, um, actually I'm going to name this always check for note overlap. So this section here, I'm going to comment this, and we're going to call this target notes, so hit or miss. Okay. 
And then this is our main thing up here that's going to be checking for the Q. And I'm going to pull this all in closer now. And we'll comment over this. So I'll just call this Metasound Q Timing. Okay, so we need to do more with this because I'm going to pull this up. We need to make some space here. So the next part I'm going to go over is going to explain how to offset the sound. So, oops, let's go in here and check this out. I'm going to hit compile and save, make sure it's all saved. I should save the project. I haven't been saving anything up here. Okay, so when I hit play, the music already started. And I don't want it to start until the note reaches the target in the middle there. So I'm going to show you a trick for this. And this is where we're going to have to go back to Metasound and change something. So what I've done, because I tried this before and it worked pretty good, is off of Enable Inputs, we're going to do a sequence. So I'm going to click and drag from here. We'll do a sequence. And basically, we're going to be copying our audio and we're going to offset it using a delay. All right, so we need this to play at the bottom no matter what. But this audio component here, we're going to duplicate this and we're going to pull this up here. And I'm going to try to make a little more space here, pull this back. So the first thing we're going to be doing and I'm going to pull all those back a little bit. Off this sequence, we're going to go up here and do a delay. And I'm going to disconnect this, and we're going to go straight into this audio here. And then we're going to go to this one. So this delay we're going to have to figure out. So I'm going to guess right now, but we're going to have to come back and figure this out. I'll put four seconds for now. That's probably not going to line up, but we'll be able to figure that out and change it. This is the audio that is going to be playing that we're going to hear. So there's going to be a delay. The targets are going to be launched out from this audio because this is the one that's using Metasound and it's going to check for the cues. So this is going to start playing right away, and it's going to spawn our targets. But then the player should only hear this audio, which is going to be delayed, so that this all lines up at the same time. So we need to silence this one. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to set the volume from here. So we're going to click and drag this over here past watch output, and we'll do a set volume multiplier. And then we can drag the exec pin over here. If we set this to zero, I'll just show you what's going to happen here. So I'm going to hit compile. I'm going to hit save. There's a delay of four seconds on there. If we hit play and we wait, the audio started, but our stuff, our notes are not spawning. And I'm going to explain why that's happening. And it has to do a meta sound. So if we go back to Metasound over here, we have to go to Source and under Voice Management, under Virtualization, this has to be set to Play When Silent. Otherwise, Unreal Engine will basically shut off. It won't play this if the audio volume is set to zero. So I've discovered that and now I'm sharing it with you so you don't have to try to pull your hair out figuring out why it's not working. So I'm going to go back after this, make sure I hit save. I'm going to go back to the spline and I'm going to play this now and here come the notes. So our timing is off so I'll just go back and tweak the delay. So I'll set this to 3.8. I'm going to have to figure this out. 
Um, we could use math, we could use the length of the spline and figure it out, but I'm just going to eye it up for now. I could move this over and make sure that the spacing lines out so the units and the length of the spline and the delay should probably line up, but I'm just doing it by eye right now. That's close, and 3.9 is what I had in my other project. That's what it looks like it's going to be here as well. Which makes sense because it's all the same lengths. So that might be, I, that's probably still a little bit off. So let's try it. All right. So this is me tapping F and hitting this in time. So if I miss, it misses. Otherwise, it's a good hit. All right. So that all works. And that pretty much concludes the tutorial. So I've gone through this whole thing. We have it all set up. So based off this framework, you could probably find all kinds of cool ways to uh, make this a much nicer looking game. Obviously, you could utilize the, um, the HUD and you could be having some nice graphics pop up whenever the player makes a good hit on the note. And yeah, we've cleaned up the whole blueprint even, so I could clean this up further, but that's pretty much everything working at this point. So I'm going to end the video here. And yeah, if you have any questions or comments, uh, you can leave them in the comment section or reach out to me. I'd love to hear people's feedback and different ways to go about this. All right, cheers.